Good day everyone! I'm Teacher Percy and I'm your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Before we proceed, do not forget to like, share, and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for updates about our latest videos. For our most essential learning competency, determines the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the given if-then statement. Previously, we learned about how to transform a statement into its equivalent if-then form. But today, before we proceed to our lesson, let's subvert this activity. Tell whether the following statement is true or false. An if-then statement is composed of two clauses, the if clause and the then clause. You are correct. The answer is true. We can denote a letter for each clause P for the if clause and Q for the then clause. The statement is in the form if Q, then P. You are correct. The answer is false because it should be if P, then Q. Conditional statements are formed by joining two statements P and Q using the words if and then. You are correct. The answer is true. The if clause is called the conclusion and the then clause is called the hypothesis. You are correct. The answer is false because the if clause is the hypothesis and the then clause is the conclusion. A simple flow of reasoning from if clause to then clause is called simple implication. You are correct. The answer is true. In the statement, if you are at SM, then you got it all. The clause, then you got it all, is the conclusion. Correct. The answer is true. In the statement, if x is equal to 2, then x plus 3 equals 5, the hypothesis is if x equals 2. You are correct. The answer is true. Now, let's have our activity number 2. All picks in one word. Give one word that will best describe the following pictures. You have 10 seconds. Correct! The word is transform. It has something to do with our lesson for today because our lesson is transforming if-then statement into converse, inverse, and contrapositive. For our learning objective, we have transform if-then statement into converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Now, let's get started. Recall that if-then statement is denoted by the symbol if P, then Q. And now, we will proceed to our next activity, which is the three way of transforming if-then statement. Example number one. Write the statement in if-then form. An even number is divisible by two. Answer. If it is an even number, then it is divisible by 2. In this statement, 
we have if P, then Q. Transforming if then statement to converse, interchange or switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. So we will have if Q, then P. Therefore, we have the converse as if it is divisible by 2, then it is an even number. Next, transforming if then statement to inverse, negate the hypothesis and the conclusion, so we will have if not P, then not Q. Therefore, we have the inverse as if it is not an even number, then it is not divisible by 2. Next, transforming if then statement to contrapositive, switch the inverse. So we will have if not Q, then not P. Therefore, we have the contrapositive as if it is not divisible by 2, then it is not an even number. To understand it well, let's have another example. Write the statement in if then form. Two angles that have the same measure are congruent. Answer If two angles have the same measure, then the two angles are congruent. Here we have if P, then Q. Transforming if then statement to converse, we will have if Q, then P. Therefore, we have the converse as, if two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. Transforming if then statement to inverse, we have, if not P, then not Q. Therefore, we have the inverse as, if two angles do not have the same measure, then the two angles are not congruent. Transforming if then statement to contrapositive, we have if not Q, then not P. Therefore, we have the contrapositive as if two angles are not congruent, then they do not have the same measure. And now, for our chat time, let's go to our essential notes. These are the points to remember. To transform if then statement to converse, inverse, and contrapositive, be guided and follow the following pattern. For converse, interchange or switch P and Q or the hypothesis and conclusion. Therefore, we will have if Q then P. For inverse, Negate the hypothesis and the conclusion of if then statement. We will have if not P, then not Q. For contrapositive, negate the converse or switch the inverse. So we will have if not Q, then not P. Again, our points to remember. Converse, if Q, then P. Inverse, if not P, then not Q. Contrapositive, if not Q, then not P. Now, it's your turn. Transform the mathematical statement into converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Let's get it on! If x is equal to 2, then x plus 3 is equal to 5. What is the converse? You are correct. The answer is, if x plus 3 is equal to 5, then x is equal to 2. Now, what is the inverse? You are correct. If x is not equal to 2, then x plus 3 is not equal to 5. And lastly, 
What is the contrapositive? Very good. That is correct. If x plus 3 is not equal to 5, then x is not equal to 2. Always remember, to make our life worth living, transform failure to success. Again, Mr. Percival F. Halili, your grade 8 mathematics teacher, mabuhay!